Humanity in every age has always looked to works of art and current art forms to shed light upon its path and destiny. Before the late technospheric phase, the purpose of art was to ennoble the soul. For example, great artistic care was taken in making most of the movies of the 1930s and 1940s. As a result, these films contained a certain aesthetic spiritual value that was fresh at that time. From the 1940s to the present, the ceiling of the imagination has become continuously lowered. This is due to technology and the proliferation of information that numbs the psychosensory capacity of the human, reducing it to a smaller and smaller wavelength band. At this point, people can only handle so much information at a certain level, and so resort to ready-made forms of entertainment that generally numb their consciousness. Now the imagination is, for the most part, disconnected from the soul, so the art is very different. At this stage of late historical materialism, the human swims through a world of images created by mass media, pulp fiction, movies and television. Often the world of images seems more real to the human than his or her actual experiences. This fictitious world of images is often beset with gradations from profane to obscene. People rely increasingly on second-hand forms of entertainment to satisfy their imaginations. Thus, their imaginations are enslaved by materially dependent sensationalist forms such as movies, video games, internet, cell phones, iPods, and other gadgets, until their mind is so saturated by images or sound bites that they cannot even think straight. This mind pollution cuts them off from the source. For example, think of the genre represented by authors such as Stephen King or violent movies and video games, internet, reality television and soap operas, etc. What level of the imaginal realm do these genres target? What is the meaning of this? The lower the, refle the lower the reflection, the more the world conforms to it through proliferation and entrenchment of the most mundane aspects of everyday reality, because it is so easy for most people to relate to it. In this way, human civilization bounces from one image to the next without pausing to note what it is mentally ingesting, not realizing that it is sinking lower and lower away from the source. Every day in the cities, people go to work where they exchange time and energy for money to buy more images. Often after work, whether they are heavy laborers or office people, they might stop by the video store, pick up a movie or game, or download videos from the internet and spend their evening putting their mind into someone else's imaginary realm where they identify with people who do not exist. Then they go to sleep and dream about scenes from the movie, and may even think about it the next day. Does this state of existence satisfy the soul? To begin with, most people work jobs that do not particularly uplift or elevate their soul, though they might tell others that they are doing something interesting and like their job. In some cases this might be true, but in most cases it is not. Most people work jobs that are incongruent with their sole mission, but have no idea how to get out of it. Some do not even question that there is anything more. For many, the work situation numbs their psychosensory system and narrows their mental wavelength band, rendering them receptive to only a sliver of the imaginal realm, and this sliver is filled by the external imaginal realm of the mass media. This is an increasingly tight and narrow feedback loop. To reverse this situation, imaginal intelligence must be brought to the forefront as the primary human reality. The human must take back the power of his or her own imagination and allow time to discover and explore this realm, and eventually bring these new visions to the phenomenal world. This is the purpose of cosmic history. According to recent UNESCO studies, based on linear standards, by 2033, two-thirds of the human race will live in cities. And two-thirds of those who live in cities will live in slums. If you think about this, 
it would appear that the human beings as a collective have lost the meaning of life. If people are not connected with their soul essence, then they are not really alive. The loss of meaning of civilization is symbolized through the acts of increasing suicide bombers, a desperate response to the collective human soul. For this reason, the human race must be rethought. It is the duty of cosmic history to bring to the forefront the fact that, yes, human civilization is swimming to a never-increasing sea of images, and many people are depressed and struggling every day just to survive. Why? The reason lies in a whole system disconnect from source, reinforced by the bombardment of images. According to cosmic history, this situation can change in an instant, when the human learns to shake off preconceptions of the world and regain their imaginal freedom. Once everyone returns to the core of their unique imaginal essence, our planet will be transformed. The Bible says that God created man in his own image. This means that the human was endowed with the image and capacity that God had when he created the universe. This is the power of the imaginal realm. The phenomenal world is created from the imaginal world. Therefore, we should explore the imaginal realm like we have explored the phenomenal realm and understand its laws. The human being is the hinge between the phenomenal and imaginal worlds, and art is the bridge. The humans have proved that they can make things happen in the phenomenal world. They can create art events, inventions, buildings, music and new technologies that reshape the phenomenal world. But are these creations based on manifesting a higher truth of the soul? The imaginal realm has value only if it is rooted in the soul. What good is creation without soul? The purpose of the imaginal realm is for the soul to experience evolution through the endless innovative power of art. The soul is the seed of the imaginal consciousness. The hologram of human existence is inscribed in this seed with all of its potentiality. The human is endowed with intelligence expressed as sense organs that look out and a soul that looks in. The soul urges the human to translate the experiences of the sensory realm into the imagery of the imaginal realm and then make some form of art from it, whether it is painting or guacamole. We must ask once again, what is art? What is the imagination? What is the imaginal realm? What are we capable of? What is our purpose? In reality, The imaginal realm is primary and the phenomenal world is secondary. Henry Ford imagined the automobile before he created it. Once the automobile was introduced, the human became addicted to it. This is because of the evolutionary process of historical materialism. As each new technological invention is created, the human becomes addicted to it. This addiction must be broken if we are to reclaim our connection with Source. Many people talk about having a corporate image. This insinuates that the corporation is actually doing something to your mind. Think of the corporate image of names such as Starbucks, Microsoft or Coca-Cola. These words conjure particular thoughts or feelings that create an image. An image is not just an imitation of something in the phenomenal world, but the capacity of the imagination to assemble within the mind particular constructs that create particular sensations or feelings. These sensations or feelings are then acted on in a particular way to affect a collective emotional image, like America or Hinduism. All those images exist in the mind as collectively held constructs depending upon the conditioning of the perceiver. As Allen Ginsberg said, whoever controls the media, the images, controls the culture. Specific images are used to motivate people in particular ways, usually for political or economic purposes. For example, the image of the American flag is used as a tool or symbol of mind control. To some, this symbol reinforces pride and patriotism, while in others, it foments revulsion. This is an example of the power of a symbol to trigger emotional responses, 
particularly in this time of late technospheric historical materialism.